James, let me, let me change the topic a little bit then. We're, we're talking about uh, trying to figure out what type of tumor uh, we're going to be treating. Are there any blood tests, any biomarkers? This is a very hot topic uh, that we can use right now. Can we get a blood test and, and diagnose a neuroendocrine tumor, or can that tell us yeah. how to treat them? So I think the, the, the topic of biomarkers, uh, especially, you know, blood or urine blood marker, uh, biomarker is one that's uh, really great for us to discuss. Uh, the way I view these biomarkers, they can be used in a variety of different ways. They can be used for screening, diagnosis, prognosis, and predictive way in terms of selecting treatments uh, for a specific patient. I would say uh, we have different levels of evidence and different recommendations for each of those things. For screening, unfortunately, I don't think we have any good biomarkers. And it's an intrinsically very difficult problem because it's a rare disease. So no matter you know, what mark you look at, they have very low positive predictive potential. So I don't think we really can use it for screening. In terms of our diagnosis, certainly for someone who you're suspecting they have carcinoid syndrome, you know, tests such as 5-HIA, uh, which really is a measure of kind of uh, average uh, serotonin levels over a 24-hour period, uh, can be very useful. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't give someone a diagnosis of that without actually getting a tissue diagnosis as well. But it's definitely part of the diagnostic workup we should do. Tim, let me let me then ask you. So, a patient walks into your clinic. What are the what are the markers that you that you get? Yeah. So it kind of depends on how they're presenting. Uh, for a uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, for example, it can be guided by the symptoms they're presenting with. Well, I typically get chromogranin A. Uh, neuron-specific ELAs, which uh, both are general markers, can be elevated uh, in patients with non-functional tumors. Uh, if they have um, symptoms of an insonoma, for example, uh, hypoglycemia or weight gain and so forth, then I will get insulin, pro-insulin, and C-peptide. Uh, if they have symptoms suggestive of gastrinoma, so diarrhea, reflux, and, and things like that, I will get a gastrin level. And uh, if they have profound diarrhea, you know, with a uh, um, pancreatic mass, then VIP uh, definitely should be checked. And finally, gluconoma for people who have a uh, rash, uh, diabetes, and so forth. So you really, so you really tailor the, the markers and the hormone levels that you're getting to what the what the patient looks like and what their what their symptoms are. Yeah, I get a few general markers. The rest I kind of tailor based on what they have. Let me turn to, to Rod. Do you have a, a favorite panel that you get on every patient, or do you sort of tailor the biomarkers as no, well? No, I agree with James. I target it very specifically. 